How's it going folks? It's been a little while since I've uploaded, but I'm happy to present with you this long-awaited project that myself and my friend Walnuts have been working on. A few months back, I was in the works of making a podcast and provide uh, you guys a more closer look at certain topics that I think aren't as deeply covered as I'd like, and uh, Walnuts decided to jump on board to become my co-host, so without further ado, I welcome you all to the No So Podcast. Welcome to the, what was this, like the first, I guess, what we call an episode, a fucking... The first episode of the No So Podcast. The first episode of the No So Podcast. So, my name is Case, or Misfit, as most people would call me, Misfit on, on the channel. Uh, my buddy Walnuts, I don't know if you want to refer to yourself as anything else. Hi, I'm Walnuts. <laughs> I'm Walnuts. Uh, you might know Walnuts from my video, The Spy Party. Uh, video that we did. It's like 20 Which I believe I would, something I minutes won. Long. Uh I don't think you did. Well, you know, it was pretty close. Uh if I were if I were a real sniper, I would totally kick your ass. You think so? Well, you know, I've never been trained, but I've seen a lot of sniper movies, so I know uh Of course the, the classics, American Sniper? Yeah, yeah, of course, yes. I've seen uh, all Steven Seagal movies, you know. All all the Steve <laughs> Have you seen that man lately? <laughs> Dude, this, no, guy, so this guy's crazy. dripped out. Yeah, yeah. He's just waddling around. The guy's dripped the fuck out these days. Sitting through about fifty percent of all of his um, of all of his scenes. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure he fought like martial arts. He fought like three dudes sitting down in a chair. In a movie? Yeah, in a, it was a, a full blown movie. <laughs> I haven't yeah. seen a movie of Steven Seagal in so long. My father used to worship that man, though. He was like, yeah, this, that guy, Bruce Lee and Chuck Norris. You remember the Chuck Norris memes, man? I swear that's like the, the, the origins of memes was Chuck Norris. I think he was like the yeah, first like, viral the, meme. And the fucking, um, those, those fucking, I forget what even The called. Neon Cat yeah. meme. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think that was, those were like the, the originals, you know? That was like, that was like 2009 shit like that. Like, you Oh, know? man. I, I, yeah, even further back. Yeah. And then they brought back. The Club Penguin memes, dude. Or the, what was it Club, yeah. Club Penguin? Sorry. Yeah, we're gonna go go through the uh, lineage of memes. Mm-hmm. Um, it wasn't until about 2015 that uh, you know tears started arriving in the meme scene. Yeah, for sure. Uh, uh, it was back in the, uh, I think they had uh, uh, Pepe labeled as a like a, like a terroristic like symbol, symbology. The frog like guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? Yeah, this is like way back. What? The Peppo Peppo uh, Pepe guy? Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. You, you never heard about this? No. What? What? The... Yeah, like they like it was on news broadcast. Like they were like, like fucking Pepe was linked to like just like violence and shit like that. Um, linked to violence. Yeah, like violence. Like, what do you do? Terrorist. Fucking burn down an orphanage? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. It's like a symbol, <laughs> like, a, like a sign, or a sign that like you know you watch out. You watch your kids, man. They got that Pepe. You know they're up to fucking no good. They got that Pepe. <laughs> <laughs> Make it sound like he's got that fucking drug. He's on bath salts. Watch out. He's been, yeah, 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 yeah. He's yep. been consuming too much Pepe. And I, I saw, like, on the fucking news channels, they had, um, like, the fucking picture of Pepe screaming and shit like that. Oh, my God. Uh, fuck. So, yeah. Uh, do you want to talk about yourself? Like, I, I figured we could get to, uh, get to know... Get people to know who we are, kind of thing. Get to know who we are. Yeah, I'm a gamer. You know, I'm, I'm a gamer. Hardcore gamer. Hardcore gamer. You know, um, sweaty. You know, I, I, sweaty. I KD. KD is off the charts. You know. Of course. Yeah. Uh, what game do you prefer for for sweating? Uh, in, in the KD. In the KD. Yeah. Dude, gotta be Minecraft. Minecraft, really? Yeah. Uh, yes, sir. I, I see. The top, top notch Minecraft KD. You, you wouldn't believe my, my BR skills are beyond fucking recognition. Oh, you're playing those Hunger Games servers, huh? Yep, 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 yep. yep. Yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> I was inspired by, by, by fucking Captain Sparkles, which other. <laughs> of course, of course, the classics. Fucking Captain Sparkles and uh, what was it like Uber Hacks and Ova and all them? Like yeah, Uber Hacks and this. Yep, yep. What does he even fucking do these up. days? I he's think on, he does GTA RP. He's on no pixel, yeah. yeah. Jesus, man. I remember I used to. I remember uh, there's this this Minecraft segment he did, the Walking Dead one. I don't know if you remember that one. Uh, he did it with uh, he did it with uh, what's his name, Dan's News or something like that. I think his name was Dan's News. Or was it like Dan? I can't remember. Dan's, Dan's News Gaming or something. I I think it was him. I can't remember if it was, if it was him or someone else. But uh, and then they got the the, the guy who played Carl. 
Uh, no fucking way. Yeah, they got Chandler Riggs on there to play Carl. What? Well, on fucking Minecraft? Yeah, because he played Minecraft. He had his own Minecraft server. I actually played with with Chandler Riggs on on his Minecraft hey, server. You, you played with Chandler Riggs. I played with Chandler Riggs. Yeah, this was way early. This was when season two released of The Walking right. Dead. I remember because okay. um, they were dressed up as uh, Uber Haxon was playing Shane, and I think it was Dan who was playing as as Rick. And they had their Minecraft skins as that, and then they had Chandler Riggs come in and dress up as a Carl skin. Um, and I remember after that, they kind of like, I can't remember what what episode it was. I, uh, there's so many fucking ones. They had like 300 fucking episodes of, of that Minecraft shit. I don't even know if they ever even finished that full gameplay or not. I don't know what ever happened. I never followed it through because I was watching it like religiously. Uh, was in grade. What has it been? Because it was. Walking in came out in 2010, so it'd have been 2012. I was 12 years old, so sixth grade. I was watching that sixth shit religiously grade. every day. Yeah, I remember that yeah, shit. Come home, come home, get you know. I'd come home, yeah. come get home. Regular season of Walking Dead. And I would, get my yeah, walking. exactly. And I would just binge that shit all the time. I remember because uh, then I think it was in one of them. They left in the description his like Minecraft server, and one day I popped on. There was like 10 people on there, man. I was very surprised because like it was The Walking Dead and Uber Hacks. Nova. you, I would have thought it, it picked up some traction. It didn't. And there were all those 10 people were in a fucking Skype call, dude. This is before Discord, right? Right? People weren't using Discord at this point, so it was Skype where the shitty mic yep. quality and everything. Yep. Yep. And they they're like, "Yo, add us on Skype." I was like, "What?" I was like, "This is fucking insane." They add me into this big ass group call they had going on, and then we were just playing Minecraft for like the next eight hours. I remember because I was like, "Man, like." By the end, I ended the call and I left. I was like, "Holy fuck, dude!" Like this Bro, I'm is. I'm playing Minecraft with Chandler Riggs. Yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah, I was like, dude, I, I just play Minecraft with fucking Carl. Like, the th yeah. funny thing was, I didn't even ask him one question about The Walking Dead. The entire time, <laughs> I, the entire time, I was just more so in awe that I was playing with the Chandler Riggs. I was like, this is this is fucking incredible. Well, then the next day you go to fucking school. It's like, yo, I, just, I, I was hitting up Chandler Riggs. You know, he and I are fucking buddies. You know, get fucked. No, fuck no, bro. I would have gotten... No? <laughs> no. Dude. Why you just talk to me? What? I would have gotten bullied. I was shooting with Chandler like, Riggs. Dude, like, no, dude they would have fucking... been, been like, oh, you were playing, you were playing Minecraft? <laughs> fucking loser. You it's, fucking it's bum. Great. Hey, all those motherfuckers. Dude, are my self-confidence at that point was so low anyway. Like, I didn't gain any confidence until, like, the 11th grade. Like my my self confidence and my my how self conscious I was of how people thought of me back then was insane. Like I, it was off the charts because for for the longest time I was like nervous about like even how I dressed, man. But I didn't really get a say in it, right? At that point, like I didn't have any pocket change. It's not like I could get a job because the the minimum age you have to be is fourteen. So I was like I couldn't get a job. I couldn't buy what clothes I liked. The only thing I got a say in whenever I'd go shopping with my mother. When she'd buy me shit is uh, is my shoes. That was the only thing. And I remember I got these really nice pair of, of Jordan ones. And ever since then, I've just been collecting them. You still got the uh, original pair? No, fuck no, dude. Those would have been like, they would have been like size, size like what, like six or sevens <laughs> at that point when I was that small. Uh, not that I've grown that much since. <laughs> <laughs> That's still my fit. You know. No, uh, now I wear size 11. So uh, we 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 stepped up, you know. Stepped up. We yep. stepped up. Stepped up. No pun intended there, but you know. So I don't. I don't wear. I don't wear Jordans that much. But I'm more of a Vans guy. You more of a Vans guy? Yeah, like slip-on Vans, or, or like the the ones where you tie up? I got a pair of uh, slip-ons. I also got a pair of lace-ups. Um, I got fucking authentic shit like that. Yeah, I love them. They're fucking. They work great. Do you? Here's my question. Do you like prefer low-cut like sneakers or shoes, or do you prefer like high top? Like for me, I like a like a decent mid. Like with the with See, the Jordan ones, I like them at the ankle. For me, you know, I'm thinking in high school I wore like these fucking sick ass white high tops with a um, with a blue line through them. Mm -hmm. They were sick. I fucking love them. Um, but like you know, regularly I'll just wear the the you know low cut ankle ankle high because I yeah, I can just slip them on, go out the fucking door. But you know, even yeah. for work I wear I wear like you know high top boots. High top boot. Well, like like Tim's. No, no, no. Like um like Chelsea's. Okay, okay. So I just laceless, no laces. Right, right, right. Yeah, I like to look fresh. Oh, man. Um, actually, I was watching a video today, and I thought this would be a good a good topic to discuss because it's. No it's... way. <laughs> all right, all right, but um, it, it was on YouTube. But I don't know if you heard of the recent drama with with Moist Critical, uh, Mr. Charles White. Not heard. Uh, 
Elaborate. So there's there's this beef going on between him and this other uh, this other guy, uh, arguing about whether React channels and like streamers are really considered original, or uh, some other things like are they a pest on the earth? Do you think? Oh, okay. So the streamer Moy is critical of debating whether streamers. No, are... so some guy, some I guess from what I'm understanding, he reacted to some guy's channel like on stream. He reacted to his videos, and the guy was just like, dude, like. <laughs> Come well, up with your own, yeah, take that down. Like, like come up with your own <laughs> fucking content forehead. <laughs> Pretty much how it went. Okay, okay. Uh, and then they got beef. Now they yeah, beef. yeah. So, so we won't talk about specifically on that in specific, but but the topic itself. Well, what do you think about that? Like, what, uh, what, do you, what do you think about react? Like, like streamers who just react to shit rather than than like play a game or do their own content. I think it can get views, but you know, it's a cop out. It's easy. It's like um, you know, it's like cheat codes. I think yeah. Could it, could it definitely instill like you know easy easy mindset because you know you, when you're a streamer you're your own boss you know you've operate you operate on a, a platform sure but you are your own boss you're your own you know di creative director and the content that you put out you're your own brand and sure. so if you want to take just easy ways out and and i guess i don't know if you want to produce a certain type of content that is very little input but, you know, in some of these cases, they're getting very, very heavy, um, you know, output and mm. gain, um, monetary value even in certain cases. That could seem, I don't know, certain people could look at that in a negative light, but, you know, I guess it's not necessarily the worst thing I've ever heard of. You know, there's plenty sure. of React, React channels and React stuff is, is, you know, dates back to, you know, some of the beginning points of YouTube even. Yeah, like with the React Bros or Fine Bros or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what the fuck were they called? Yeah, I think it was is it Fine, Fine Bros. Bros? Yeah. yeah, motherfuckers tried to patent the word React. Yeah, I remember that. What was that? That yeah. was in like 2018, wasn't it? It wasn't that long uh, ago. Yeah, it was after the channel fucking died. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so my thought was like, it's a double-edged sword, I think, right? Because on one end, um, it's good for the person that they're covering if they're a smaller YouTuber, but even if they're like on par with that, right? So like, for example, say, uh, let me throw some random name out there, right? Like, like, okay, Miskip, for example, right? Big, Ooh. big streamer, big stream. <laughs> <laughs> Who? Guy gets like one viewer, what the hell? No, um, 30, so 30,000 viewers, 40,000 viewers, right? And this guy, you know, he goes to watch some guy's YouTube channel who's got like maybe 200 subscribers or some shit. Just some guy that ha that's in his recommended for whatever reason or like a, a donator just had him, you know, suggest you watch this video. And then the next day that guy gains like a thousand, two thousand, say whatever X amount of subscribers because of that. And then on top of that, he gains views on that and, and he gains traction. I, I would say it's basically getting free publicity in a way. Yeah. If, if you would say so, like, because if, if you didn't, you know, even know until the next morning like say you're sleeping and then the next morning you wake up and your views have just gone up and your fucking subscriber count's gone up you're like what the fuck like what how did this happen and then you find out through the comment section you're like yeah oh i'm here for miskiff i'm here for miskiff and it's just a bunch of miskids just like hey hey man um i think it's an interesting like thought i would say to to yeah like an interesting like, kind of event yeah exactly it's it's free publicity and and yeah. i think I mean, ludwig did that he proved that we get these people with you know they're getting thousands tens of thousands of viewers per day watching them do stuff anything mm -hmm. they, they are in control of the content but you know they're they're on the same you know, say you're a streamer say you're a youtuber they're on youtube as well they're they're like arm's length away exactly they're, they're a deem away they're not far away but then they you know they come and you know just the mere mention of you we can really just boost any sort of publicity that you um that you don't have it's just incredible. Like, the, you know, the flick of the switch, it can really alter the, the other thing is, though, there's that other side, right? It's like these content creators that are reacting to your video are, are getting paid, right? They're getting paid per the viewer, per the subscriber they gain and all that. And even if they do it on YouTube, for example, right? Like they're reacting to TikToks. Realistically, that that's not their property. It's not their, their copyright or whatever the fuck you want to label it as. Um, so they're getting paid basically to react to your content that you make and they just sit there. Now some reactors i think are actually good at what they do right they actually engage with the video they don't just sit there watch the entire thing and then just go all right next video and then continue to like stuff their mouths with like fucking i don't know some fucking mcdonald's or some shit right i don't like those kinds of 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 people who who will 
go sifting through that shit because I, I feel like that's more lazy than engaging with the video and what you just witnessed and, and sharing your opinion on it, which I think is a, is a big reason like viewers want to see your reaction, right? Because like your fans are going to want to be like, hey, what do you think of this video, right? But if you kind of just watch it and then move on to another video and everyone's just kind of like, well, what did you think, man? And they kind of just sit there, I guess. I don't know. Um, but then there's also on top of that, if you give a negative reaction, uh, there's that whole, like, that whole, what's his name, Digion? That the guy who did a hate raid to Pokimane kind of thing? I didn't hear about that, yeah, okay. Um, so, like, if you give a ne negative reaction, right, to, to a, um, so someone's video that's, like, smaller than you, like, 100 subscribers or whatever, and then all your viewers just kind of go through there and they're like, trash, 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 and they just dislike it. Now, granted, YouTube's hidden the dislike thing. There's a plugin you can get to show your dislikes still. But, like, even if other people can't see your dislikes, you can see them. Like, you can see them when you're managing your videos. And you can see, like, oh, I have 100 likes, but I have, like, 6,000 dislikes on this video. So it's still, I feel like it still punches you just as much. And then on top of that, people who will express their opinions in the comments and, and leave nasty comments or whatever. Yeah, yeah, and I and I, you know, I look. You can look back and you know, that that saying, you know, all publicity is good publicity. Mm -hmm. I think that definitely has its merits. You know, even if everybody's coming to your channel to you know shit on you, you're still getting the views and shit like that. Yeah, and it, yeah, they're saying bad things, and I think that's a that's a note to it's a point to note on is you know like all publicity is bad publicity. I guess that comes from a long time ago on TV and all that magazines sure. where you couldn't really hear the direct opinion of what the person thinks. You know, to your face, you couldn't hear that. You couldn't just agreed. Could just hear about everything everybody thinks. Uh, but you know, we're in a different time. The, yeah, we got the we got the comment system that lets you know immediately what people think of the content that you're putting out. Exactly, and and and, and since we're so advanced too, right? Like people, it, it, this is all happening live. Like this is like minute by minute, second by second. Like even with with just general shit, like like wrestling or sports, right? Like. You're getting that 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 playback, that pay per view, and all that shit. Like that's happening live in front of you. You don't have to buy tickets anymore to go watch a game. You can literally just watch it from your fucking TV, or you can watch it live on YouTube or, or whatever live streaming platform you're choosing to, to watch it from. Although I do think we've gotten off topic. We have. What were we? Oh yeah, we were back on the on reactors. Reactors. Yeah, and what we think. Of them. So what do you think of reactors overall? Well, I've already touched about um, I've already touched about you know I think they could be. It, uh, you would streamers have the power to uh, very much harm the genre or add to it. You know, there's a lot of YouTubers out there that are, you know, specialized in a certain field and they can cover content regarding that field and they can give really, you know, in-depth um, analysis and critiques and, and, and you know, mm -hmm. uh, break it down about what might have gone wrong, what they've done well, and perhaps you can use that information going forward if you're interested in that field, you know. Yeah. A lot of... Um, you know, it's a lot of music um, reactions and, and analysis on, on YouTube and, and streams. And it's a lot of, um, you know, it's a lot of, uh, what's it, um, uh, movies and stuff like that. And this right. is YouTube as well, but you go, we can go over the, go over, you know, Twitch and, you know, things tend to be a bit more casual, I think, you know, you can can tune into you know toast or misgif and watch they're watching fucking anime all day yeah well and i don't know if they can do that as much now no not anymore but you know it used to it used to be like it used to be back when you could it was like a very easy way to just fucking watch tv and mm -hmm. get content yeah if you want to have an easy day you could just do that or you know you get shit like fucking pokemon where she got <laughs> Uh, fucking three day ban for watching Korra. And was it Korra or was it Avatar? Yeah. Uh, I think it was Avatar. But yeah, she, was... she turned, it was a fucking publicity stunt. There it is. Everybody's talking about fucking. Do you think it was on purpose? Do you think she deliberately, uh, sorry, deliberately, like, watched something she knew she'd get DMCA'd for at the risk of her losing her channel? I think. I don't know. Uh, I don't know her relationship with Twitch or any of the um, sponsors that she has to Twitch of course. people like she talk to, um, or like how many times she's actually been, you know, caught up in that kind of bullshit before in the past. But I think they could, um, whether it be by, you know, intention or not, um, you know, I think uh, her response afterwards could have definitely helped improve that into a, a publicity stunt. You know, get people talking about it. Sure. Talking about 
Pokimane. Mm-hmm. You know, just because she didn't have Twitch, she still have all these other social media platforms that she was able to sort of drive the narrative, I guess, or shit like that. Who knows? No, yeah, but, I, I can, I can see that. I, I I'm think, not a um, <laughs> not a politician, but, um, no, yeah, I can see that. It's interesting that you bring that up because I was thinking about it. Um, with with a lot of Twitch sponsors, I have heard a rumor. I don't know if this is true. That Pokemon was gonna swap to YouTube recently. Oh, so Not Facebook? <laughs> <laughs> Facebook Gaming Live. <laughs> I, uh, w- w- actually, yeah. W- what do you think about that? Do you think that's gonna take off at every, at any point? Facebook. Yeah, I feel no like because like even our generation, like when when someone tells me, "Oh, I'm on Facebook," like it's not often people born from the 2000s and up that I meet that I've watched Facebook. Like even even some f- even further back, right? My brother, he's five years older than me, would still use his Facebook, but on occasion, right? He kind of just uses it for Messenger, realistically. So, like, I'm wondering, for, for in terms of, like, a live streaming, like, for gaming and stuff like that, or for just anything, like, like Twitch would be, like, a Twitch platform, I don't know how that would work. Because Facebook is more than just um, that. And with all the scrutiny they've gone under, right? With all the lawsuits that... that Oh my God. Lizard Man <laughs> has gone <laughs> lizard through. Man. Uh, lizard, lizard Man has bird. gone through. Yeah, Lizard Berg has gone through. Um, I feel like people are kind of like more iffy and, and distrusting, not only of like just deals, but like just in general, right? Like with privacy issues, like with other with other platforms, like like with Twitch. Most of that stuff is anonymous, man. You can make like a hundred different accounts, and it's completely anonymous. They can't track it back to you. The only people who know your information is Twitch themselves. Like you can't find out. Uh, alternate accounts stuff like that so i find that interesting like they they can't track down your ip maybe they can i'm sure some hackers out there know how to do it but i mean like on a a basic level um that protection is kind of coded whereas with with facebook there's been all that like that that cover and that news coverage and shit where people so much scandalous exactly it's it's been very scandalous so it makes me wonder if that will ever take off because not only does it not garner the trust but also you you've got to think about the sponsorships and all that stuff like I, i i don't know how it works i've never even been on youtube live or facebook live or whatever the fuck it's called uh whatever what are they even calling it um is it facebook live here let me look it up let me look it up i mean uh... for me personally i think that facebook started the whole thing they started all this whole you know social media platform yeah it's called facebook live they they've definitely gotten left behind i think in the in the arms of of or the terms of um popularity like you look at all these businesses, you know, um, um, owner-operated businesses, small mm. town businesses. Everybody has a Facebook. Everybody has a Facebook for their business. You know, cosplayers, gamers, um, sure. you know, entertainers, more social media, um, you know, social media person- personalities, probably, you know, celebrities. Everybody has a Facebook. Yeah. It is not. Yeah. It is not like they solely exist on Facebook. It is part of the plethora of other platforms that exist to maximize your publicity but if you want to solely operate on facebook i feel like you might be limited be due to the fact that you know for me personally i use facebook to get you know keep in touch with my my family yeah same you know, that's pretty much it yeah. and everything like that you know it is in and a lot of the older generation that wouldn't be partial to that sort of content or or you know anything like that they're the ones that use uh, Facebook, you know, which I think is kind of interesting, right? It's like it's it's like we're stepping forward each generation. Like for example, like my parents, um, they didn't contact my like my like my mother. She wouldn't contact my grandparents or her parents through Facebook, right? Because they don't have Facebook. They're not using that shit. I mean, there's some old people who are very tech savvy and who are, who are up, you know, up on yeah. the game with that shit. But then most of mo- most elderly people, like of today's generation, I guess you'd say. Uh, they they don't have that like most people born in like the 19 you know 1900s 1920s around then they're not using fucking facebook most of them yeah. uh, i mean but you can you call them the... they use phones right so that's them adapting to the new younger generation and then our parents who now use facebook are adapting to our generation but even then we're still like kind of progress further than facebook at this point i think you know with facebook it is not necessarily unpopular because like i said everybody has facebook but it's yeah. a lot simpler in use because you don't have to go look, you don't have to go around looking for, you know, people's fucking, you know, Twitter handles, exactly, or, or usernames. You can look your person up by name, 
and see what they're doing in their life. Do you think shit like that? You can keep up with people like that. Do you think we'll be keeping up with our children through Discord? <laughs> like I our parents use Facebook, that. and then we, our, our generation uses Discord. Meanwhile, they're I like, thought, right? they're like, man, Discord has been used in months, man. Like what the hell? I fucking hope not, man. I fucking hope not. Because <laughs> like, I don't wanna, I don't wanna have my fucking kids up in the, you know, on the. Fucking, I don't know, out of out of state. Like, let's say they're all fucking grown up. They moved out. Yeah. And I'm pinging them on fucking hit, uh, Discord. Like, hey, how you, do, how you doing, honey? Yeah, hey, trying to play, some, trying to run some Apex right <laughs> now. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, man, I fucking wiped the floor with you. Have you seen my KD? <laughs> Have you seen my KD? It's massive. It's yeah, huge. Yeah. Hey, they're fucking, you know, by that time, they got a fucking, like, some new game, you know, fucking, they got fucking VR that you can interact with, like, objects and shit like that. <laughs> Like, no, it's dude, like, I'm on the fucking VR. Go fuck your... So that's like, the Dad, screen. Dad, we don't use Discord anymore. We use some more advanced app, whatever the fuck it's gonna, they're going to come up with after Discord. Because first it was... Mm -hmm. What was it? It was Skype and TeamSpeak, right? Those were, like, the main TeamSpeak. ones. And TeamSpak is still fucking... It's still yeah. used, but it's only used for, like, because of its plugins function, right? Discord doesn't have that as much. You have to, like, download extra shit for that. And I mean, yeah, Discord does have all these bots that can help yeah. with mediation. Which is cool. And I think Discord on its own is very unique. And I wouldn't even put Discord and, and TeamSpeak in the same uh, category. I, I'd say they're parallels. Because TeamSpeak's very simple, right? It's just used for talking. It's meant entirely for voice. Discord, you can do like so many other fucking things with it, man. Like for example, oh, we're, yeah, we're using cool. we're using a voice channel right now on a server just to record this podcast. Whereas like TeamSpeak, it's literally just voice. And then Discord, mm -hmm. you can message people, you can DM people, you can change your status, profile picture, you have all that shit. And then you can stream video, you can stream exactly uh, your webcams. Mm -hmm. I mean, shit, you can even set up events and, and different sorts of things like that. Li yeah, and the, the live broadcasting thing that they recently added, mm -hmm. uh, where, like, yeah. communities can have, like, community meetings and stuff. Like, honestly, if it wasn't for the fact that it's so abundantly used by um, gamers and stuff, um, I think that Discord is used, like... I think it could be used by businesses. You know what I mean? Like it could be used for for conference Absolutely. calls and stuff like that, kind of like Skype or Zoom is. But I think because of all that, like how it's used by such a younger generation, the older people haven't accepted it as a, a fundamental mm. application to use for. Yeah, for just businesses. look at Zoom, bro. Oh my god. Zoom is Zoom is on another thing. I mean, Zoom is useful for a lot of things, though, right? Like like Austin Show uses it. I'm pretty sure. I think he uses. It. I don't know if he uses Discord or, or Zoom. I think he uses Zoom though for uh, for his lover hosts. Uh, I mean, I believe. You can look at, and this might be a hot take, okay. but I think that Discord falls in line with another, I guess you could say, um, primitive um, platform. I think that Discord is, is very more advanced, yes, but that's, that comes with the technology and the yeah. and the availability of certain technology. To it, it's uh, definitely carved its name. It, it's definitely that, kicked it kicked yeah. in the door. I think the Discord is quite similar in ways to MySpace. You think so? Mm -hmm. I can see the similarity, yeah, for sure. I, I I was just thinking, like, for example, I remember when Discord first came out, and everyone was sketched out by it, right? Because everyone was always like, oh, it's ran by, like, so-and-so company. You don't trust them. Like, they've done this and that. But, like, progressively over the years, Discord has gotten so much better in some ways. And then in other ways, they kind of shit the fan or whatever the, the shit hit the fan with them, rather. Um, they, shit, they shit the bed. They shit the bed with some, some things. So some features, like... I get the Nitro feature, but there's a lot of things about Nitro that kind of piss me off as well. Like, they, they really put you behind some certain pay, paywalls for certain things, like uploading yeah. larger yeah. files in DMs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You higher quality streams and higher such. quality stream High quality streams, I can understand. Uh, adding a background, yeah. like, aesthetic stuff that you don't actually need, right? But, yeah. like, when it comes to, like, sending someone a file or something, like, you can't go over, I think it's 8 megabytes if you don't have Nitro. Which I think is, yeah. like... When you think about it, eight megabytes is fucking nothing. That's tiny. Like that's that's a that's a 1920 by by 1080 image. If you try to send it through, it's gonna be like, nah, fuck you, buddy. That's too big. It'll be like 8.02 megabytes. You know what I mean? Like you it'll just at, be you too. Look at, you, know, you can also use emojis from different servers. You that can too. change per server. You can change your uh, your appearance, name, and, and background, and everything. You can have all mm -hmm. this custom shit per server. It, it, it is. I guess it has give and take, you know? It makes sense since it's free, right? It makes sense. Mm -hmm. Like, whereas TeamSpeak, they make their money from you have to buy a server and then rent it, right? Yeah. Um, but whereas Discord, it's it's a different story. You're kind of... 
it, they have given you all this stuff the only extra stuff you have to pay for uh like i said for me the only thing that really irks me is is the file sharing system where they only let you have a max of eight megabytes i think if they increase that like even by a little bit man like like 100 megabytes isn't even that much i don't think to ask for personally i think um because like obviously there's some people who would probably take advantage if it was further like a gigabyte could you imagine <laughs> like i don't even think even as nitro you can share a gigabyte size file but but stuff like that uh i think is interesting I mean, what can i can you i don't know if i can find the i don't i don't know how to find the uh the maximum size you can send over files hmm I believe it's eight megabytes, but w without Nitro, I think it is. Uh, I don't know. Bigger uh, uploads, one hundred megabytes. One hundred megabytes for when you have Nitro, right? Yeah. Yep. So that's what I think. I think they should increase it from from a hundred meg. I don't know if it's a server issue with like performance wise for their servers. Maybe that's the reason why they have only at max a hundred megabytes. Perhaps, yeah. But I don't know. But that that reminds me. Have you ever seen those people who post like full on fucking movies? In, in, a, yeah. in, a, in an mp4 file in discord yeah. and they somehow keep it under 100 mega megabytes and it's still hd how the fuck do they do that man because i think it's just a, i could do with a lot of compression bro and, but and, even and, when you compress it it would kill the quality of the video in it i because i've seen some 1080p like copy movie videos of like I, I was in a discord once and this guy posted the entire spongebob movie <laughs> <laughs> he posted the entirety of the spongebob movie in this discord server and it was like only like fucking like i don't remember what it was it was something outlandish it was only like 50 or something less megabytes you know i was like how the fuck do you get that like first of all where do you find this did you make this or did you find this in another server and post it that, that, that's the first question i'm curious about it's like uh, who has who has the, t the the big brain behind this operation that they're <laughs> it's becoming like the new u torrent you're torrenting movies through your boys <laughs> on a fucking like on a server you know what i mean like you're going to the I'll pirate there, sir, not there. Not like forget there, the pirate bay go bro you go on fucking right, discord. Hit discord hit up that discord go into the server we got all the full movies posted for you under like 50 only, megabytes you can only imagine what's on the pirate bay's discord if they have one if they have one oh my god dude there's probably some fuck shit on there to be honest stuff i probably wouldn't want to see <laughs> yeah. against tos you know monka tos oh man fucking hell all right all right so we've covered a lot pretty much so far what else do we want to talk about what are what are some uh, other notes that you've been thinking about well i was i was thinking about it a lot too right the the idea was uh i mean we, we could have covered this a while back but we won't uh but what do you think about like the idea of of Twitch streamers moving to YouTube. I know, I know, we kind of talked about Pokey specifically when we got into Facebook. But what yeah. do you think about about like like how Ludwig made the big move, right? Do you think people are mm -hmm. gonna follow through with that? I mean, like Ludwig, well, Ludwig only got one viewer after he switched to YouTube. So I don't know. That's true. That's true. I don't know if it is worth it. That's know. a good point. Um, <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know. I I see a lot of a lot of like sort of more corporatized streamers, um, like sort of like you know companies that stream mm -hmm. as well. They they have both. They stream simultaneously on YouTube and on on Twitch. I've seen that a lot. Mm. Um, that happen. I've seen that happen a lot. A lot of YouTubers like to stream as well. You know, it's very it's a cool asset to have. But I don't. I think it it, it is. I don't know. It's, it consolidates a lot because you know you have a lot of these streamers that post their clips on YouTube. Um, and you know a lot of people can just have their different opinions um, when it comes to dealing with the staff and team at twitch and perhaps youtube is better for them you know you there's so much to say about youtube's past and how they've um, you know done things there's so much to say about twitch and and how they've conducted things you know I, I guess it's up to personal taste i mean for the viewer and for the audience i don't really know if it plays that big of a difference which uh, platform they are watching their streamers on i mean i you know um I guess you'd be losing a lot of your emojis that you have on, on Twitch and stuff like that, but you know, you can still interact with them in a live chat mm. with your streamer, no matter what the, uh, no matter what the platform is, it seems. And so I definitely think it's up to the personal interest. I don't really know if I have any negative thoughts about them moving over. Do you think, cause, uh, cause I, I noticed when I was watching certain videos and I, I try to keep up as much as I can. Do you think that it's easier to be found on Twitch than it is on YouTube in terms of live streaming, not not like channels, just for for specifically live streaming? Yeah, that's a good. Actually, it's a good point. Yeah, um, 
I guess you you have a lot of streamers that would be if they moved changing their brand of sorts because you know they're Twitch streamers. That's what they're known for. You can look them up on Twitch; they'll be there. Yeah. I feel like YouTube is coming into the scene of live streaming pretty heavily now that all these people are getting you know it's getting talked about. Hmm. Some of these large YouTuber or, or streamers are perhaps you, moving to YouTube. I think it'll put it in the spotlight. Uh, but as for right now, I think that you'd have an easier chance starting off on uh, YouTube because sure. it's just so saturated on Twitch. Absolutely just so saturated. You can look up any game and you'd see 10,000 results, all different languages about people streaming that game. I mean, you look at Tarkov, you look at fucking Red Dead Redemption, like it's still getting streamed, mm -hmm. story mode and all that. You look at GTA, oh my god, all these fucking, all these no pixel um, players are on Twitch, every single fucking one of them. But, you know, if you look up, you know, certain things on, on YouTube, you might be able to have an easier time finding, you know, or getting found. If, say, you are a YouTube streamer. Sure. I'd say you could, the, I guess the contest and the competition is not as great in numbers. Mm -hmm. Um... So on that note, for, for larger streamers in general, I was thinking about this. Uh, I was watching this this smaller streamer. Um, he's a cool guy, actually. I, I find him, I, th I think his fucking sense of humor is hilarious. He reminds me of Cam, to be honest. Um, for those watching, uh, Cam is a mutual friend of ours. I won't go into too much detail about him, but uh, for, for Walnut's sake. Uh, his name's Zach Digital. I don't know if you heard of him. Uh, he's actually got, like, for, for, for a smaller streamer, he's very well connected he's, he's got a lot of, of people that he knows and and i've been able to talk to him like one-on-one -on -one, not in a call or anything but like even on his streams like he's very engaging with his audience um and he's a good he, I, I think he's a fucking hilarious guy he's, he's an excellent troll um and he was interviewing a big streamer on no pixel named fan fan i don't know if you know her um and the question one of the questions that i had him ask her was is there something you wish larger streamers did for smaller streamers that they currently haven't done? For example, how the Austin show gives an opportunity to be placed in front of a large viewer audience as a small streamer and give them a chance to grow on their channel and show themselves. Because, uh, and, and her, her answer was very interesting. And, and I, to an extent I can agree with, and I understand it. Um, she said, why should I open a platform for people? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm paraphrasing here in, in the slightest. I'm not, uh, not to make her sound di uh, devious or anything. Um, kind of, I guess the, the point she was trying to make is why would I let other people kind of passively leech off my off my viewership? Um, she didn't use the word leech, just for, for any viewers. I'm, I'm not trying to just start anything. I'm just the, the point she was trying to make was like, what, what, what do I owe to them? Um, which I can understand. I can understand if you've been working really hard for something and then giving handouts for free to people um that you don't even know just just because there's their smaller channel um i think is a good point um, yeah I, I, mean, I i see both sides to it though i guess when it comes to you know the point the point of you know you're you are your own boss and you have to create your own brand and you have to develop this loyal viewership mm -hmm. and you know, whether it be malicious or just business you know, it can come to a point where, like, it's not, it is not intuitive to, you know, allow for any of that viewership to dwindle, even in the slightest. You know, you want to, you want to stay with yourself, you know, centered at the, at the, at the center of your objective and try to build off of that. Sure. And I can see, I can definitely see that. But, you know, you have a lot of these large streamers are just a conglomerate of the viewership is centered around these streamers. And it, be, it can kind of be hard for these newer streamers to, you know, take an olive from the branch. Break the ceiling, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, I, and just actually build up that viewership. Exactly. I, I think it's it's very... Um, it's very clicked. I wouldn't say it's intentional, but I'd say, of, of, of course, naturally, like, you got you got your groups like like 100 Thieves or, or OTK or, or Offline TV, all these groups of, of people. Of course, they... they you know they're under the same organization so of course they're going to be naturally streaming together and have very similar fan bases um but i'm thinking like for for like i said with with the austin show right 
he kind of gives an opportunity not only for like those big streamers to pop on a show because obviously he still needs to get those views right and people aren't going to click if it's all small streamers on his on his show he uh, from a business standpoint that would make sense if you just put a bunch of randoms on his channel that nobody knows except for those you know maybe 20 or 30 viewers who actually watch those channels um so he obviously can only so i think like i think it's hard for him he's gotta like bring in one or two people right he's gotta bring in one or two people um that are smaller just to kind of have that underdog situation you know and and i i think it's a good way it's a good way to get your foot in the door but I think it's also very difficult to get your foot in the door to begin with, to even, like, approach the door itself, you know? Yeah, I mean, like, you know, you look at, like you said, clicks and and sort of just what is the, what is the norm or what is the most, you know, um, what is the possibility of finding, you know, a large 30, 30K viewer stream, but compared to, like, 124 mm -hmm. viewer stream, like, what are the odds? What are the, what are the ratios to that? And... I don't know, it is just, it is, I guess, unintentionally gatekept just through circumstance. Do you think and it's intentional? I, I think it's unintentional. I think it's just a matter of circumstance. I think it is, you know, I think it is a matter of, of you know, everybody is over here. Mm -hmm. And you want to be over there, but, you know, it is going to be hard or harder to focus people's attention towards you. When yeah. they are all looking, the eyes are all on on large, you know, larger um, focuses of entertainment. And, and, and I, I think, think, yeah, go on, sorry. It, it can be hard, but I think I don't I don't know if there's a way to circumnavigate that. I, I think it's just like the the human condition coming into play where you want to watch this, so you watch it. Mm -hmm. And yeah, sure, you can you can get like with the algorithm or, or such, and you can get you know you can come up on people's dashboards and such and they can maybe see your stream sure but it is just um it is still just a matter of circumstance whether or not you get that that viewership and and sometimes it can take a really long time to get people to look at you yeah and and i don't think um it's a good mentality to have you know, constantly be expecting handouts because i feel like that's an entitled opinion it's like i think these people deserve to see me i think it's I, I do agree it's hard work and ethic but at sometimes it's it's kind of like that come on man give me a break kind of thing you know where people yeah, are, yeah. are kind of really like uh they're putting their all into it like i see some streamers out there like i i don't really say anything in their chat or anything but like i'll see some some streamers or even youtubers who are like two thousand three thousand subscribers and I'm like, their content is fucking mint. Like the the editing, top notch. The, you know, the the content itself is engaging. It's not, oh, I'll watch this for 30 seconds and then just oh, and just fucking dip out. You know what I mean? Like it's it's engaging through and through, and and they're fucking hilarious or they're they're entertaining in some way of however they own their craft. So I find yeah. that like when they don't get personally what I think the the more attention they deserve, it's kind of like on a scale of like man like. They've got this many people, but they could definitely be up here. I wouldn't say they'd be all the way at the top, but definitely in this more middle, middle, I want to say middle class, but you know what I mean, right? <laughs> middle uh, ground. Yeah, but it's middle area. ground of like, of like, like 100K area kind of range. Um, but I, yeah, I, I, mean, I, yeah it's, it's frustrating. It's, it's, it's disheartening. You can even look at some of these incredibly large, you know, streamers or, or channels and just, mm -hmm. You know they have been doing this for a long time yeah they've not, they've not just come out of the woodwork all of a sudden they have a million viewers they have been they have been putting in the work for years mm -hmm. and you you know there's even a double-edged sword to, to the fact that you know they are expected this is their full-time job they're expected to put out content and sometimes content just not does not come so you have to make it yourself so there is a ebb and flow of, of quality that comes to the amount of you know people that they're serving and what they need to do to keep putting all that out that's a Whereas good point you have a smaller streamer that has the time or a smaller channel that has the time they can they can upload once a week because they don't have that many people they're loyal yeah but they don't have that many people that are demanding and give it to us now you can you can really take the time to hone that video or that piece of content and make it into something that is truly a work of art i agree with that and and there's actually a, a good point in there is um big big streamers like th not all of them because we we know this from from some of our friends who are big streamers who are even partnered with twitch um they don't have a contract 
right? But some big streamers like Mizkif and, and them, they have contracts with Twitch where they have to stream X amount of hours uh, a day or a week or whatever, you know? Um, mm -hmm. And they have to rake in this many viewers for, for X amount of time kind of thing. I, I don't know the finer details, obviously. They don't release that stuff because there's probably an NDA. But um, to think about it and, and realize that that's a lot of pressure, right? Because like there's probably, like even when I used to stream, because I, I, I did streaming for, for about a year straight. And I remember when I first started, I was so hyped, man. Like I was doing 12 hour streams. I remember I'd wake up at around midnight and I would do 2 a.m. streams till 2 p.m. And I would play Rainbow Six Siege or I'd play some kind of game to try and stay engaged with the audience. And I gained a lot of following very quickly, surprisingly. Like despite it being, you know, given the amount of work I put in, I gained almost a thousand uh, followers in a year, which That's isn't that bad. You. You're such a neat guy, you know? I mean, no, no. But, but my point was, it is... I, I, I've seen some streamers who will do way less and gain more followers in less time. And I, I, I realized then, after doing more extensive research and, and being given tips by big streamers that I was friends with at the time, they were telling me, uh, it's not about how long you stream for, it's just a consistency, right? If you're consistent constantly, people will come back to your channel because there's always something new that they can click on, right? Most people don't have a longer attention span than like, what, what is it, like four minutes or some shit like that? There's some scientific thing for how long someone has an attention span when watching shit. Like, I guarantee you people are going to skim through this podcast too. Um, mm -hmm. But it, it's kind of it's kind of that interesting point where like, uh, you can only captivate someone's attention for so long before you get onto a topic that either triggers them or, or makes them uncomfortable or that they're, they're not interested in in general, that it just bores them, right? Yeah. Um, People want to constantly be entertained. We're we're in, we're in the era of entertainment, I would say, more than Oof. ever, more yes. than ever. We we are oh. in the in the. And we have era. we have so so far transcended the cinema. Oh, one hundred percent. We're at radio, the thing that started this all, the fucking gramophones. We have so far transcended beyond any wildest comprehension. Mm -hmm. Who would have thought this is where we'd end up? Uh, yeah, I mean, hundred I mean. fucking years ago. We did not have TVs, we radios. We, did not have we had radios. We had every every ounce of you know um, non personal entertainment. You mm -hmm. know, you didn't go to shows. You didn't if you didn't if you didn't go to the show. You didn't go to the fucking uh, theater. You didn't go hang out with friends. You didn't hear. You know, how are you hearing about the news? You are reading the newspaper and you are listening to fucking Walter Winchell. Uh, the fuck is are, Walter Winchell? He was a he was a fucking news broadcaster on the radio from years ago. Was he? Mm -hmm. Okay. But you were you were just you had like those two main forms of you know you had just where you could hear another person's voice broadcast the news to you. You had the radio, but now you have a fucking video screen with people on there that are just talking about their lives that you were basically living with them. You see them day in day out. Exactly. And you get to talk to them and interact with them, and there's just fucking millions of people doing this and, and when you think about it, it's crazy like even as a kid right when you'd like watch like nickelodeon and stuff because twitch didn't exist back then right mm, like no. when you were a little kid watching nickelodeon or watching whatever on, on on tv and these people were live broadcasting too some of them right it was it was kind of it was kind of pre pre-recorded some of it and then others were, were chopped in with with live recording and it's like now everything is pretty much like twitch is basically tv now but yeah. Look, look at 10 fucking years ago. What did we have 10 years ago? We had... We had YouTube. We had Skype and YouTube. They were not the same. You no. could either talk to somebody that you personally knew and have a conversation with them, or you could watch somebody on YouTube and comment, and they would answer later if they even got around to it in their next fucking video. No, sure. exa exactly. Like, that, that was the thing. You had, like, the very beginnings of, like, social media. But now you have everybody watching this one guy, and, and they're talking to him and he in he you know in certain cases they can't even respond to you because there's so many people flooding the chat they, they it is can't. just it has come so far in, in 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 not even a lifespan no yeah they i mean that that was the thing i, I covered in my first video honestly i may remake it i was thinking about that because of uh, the the feedback i got <laughs> from from cutie cinderella <laughs> when she watched it on her stream <laughs> demolished me by the way but she did give me at least she gave me some feedback right and she, and and um, her suggestion was I should just get in touch with with bigger 
content creators and just be an, a video editor but but for me i want to be more than a video editor i don't enjoy just editing videos personally I, I can be good at something and not enjoy it you know what i mean like i know plenty of people who, who are great at things and they don't enjoy it i do it because I, I was dedicated to my channel that's why the editing was so well put together for me because i'm dedicating this to me if i had to do this for someone else i probably wouldn't do it for free for obviously because it's time consuming it probably took me like six hours just to do it and the rendering takes fucking forever on top of that i'm not gonna get into it but um the suggestions as well like they th i did not write a script for my first video at all everything was off the cuff i was kind of just ranting um whereas in my in my hidden gems video i actually wrote down a script i kind of took uh the feedback and I, I wrote down a script and i wrote down what i was going to talk about and i timed myself and i paced myself to be ready for the for the next segment um yep yep and i, I thought hidden gems was wonderful which I'll, I'll probably be working on another one soon and i have some other stuff in mind but yeah like uh, i think genuinely uh looking at it from from a content creation point of view there's a lot of of behind the scenes work that people don't realize like for a big streamer to have a contract whereas a smaller streamer can pick their own hours they can do whatever they want mm -hmm. and um yeah so back to the to the main point before we get way too off topic with me streaming for 12 hours um and the suggestion that it's it's consistency over or the quantity i i do think quality over quantity and that's why i don't upload videos every fucking day on my channel because if i did that i would not only burn myself out but i would not be producing as good quality content i feel and you, like and you would so quickly run out of content that too yeah yeah i only have so many ideas i'm not mr beast dude this guy <laughs> dude, mr, dude. Dude, mr. Beast is crazy running with his ideas man's running fucking restaurants on fucking I, I, i'm convinced i'm convinced because i watched the podcast with him I, I forgot what the guy's names were but he gave some really good uh, advice before i started my channel that that get, helped me uh kick off because i ran youtube channels in the past that did fairly well but not like a thousand subscribers the, i think the highest i've ever had in subscribers on one channel was 80 um and I was I was not producing good content. Even just looking back on it in retrospect, it wasn't good content. And 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 I can be honest with myself about it now. Because as a kid, I was like, well, this is fucking hilarious. I find this funny. Why doesn't no, nobody else find this funny? But then I was honest with myself. And then I look at back on it now. And I'm like, I wouldn't say it was cringe, but it definitely wasn't good either. You know what I mean? Like it wasn't. It's it was kind of like this guy. You you could tell I just smacked on my Elgato. What is this called? Was it called? Was it an Elgato? Yeah, the Elgato. <laughs> I was recording my Xbox footage, and then I was just slapping it in a in like boot Windows movie movie editor, or whatever it was, <laughs> and just and just slapping it on YouTube after after compressing it so it could be uploaded, and uh, and I've kind of learned from that. I still have my Elgato. I could probably sell it to be honest, because I don't use it anymore. But it's so out of date at this point. If I was gonna record any content, it would be on that. What do you want to okay, talk so about? Is there anything you want to bring up? I mean, I, I don't know. <laughs> could be controversial. <laughs> what is it? I don't know. I don't know how we want to go on um on such a bring it up and I'll I'll edit it out if we think it's controversial. <laughs> what do you think about COVID? Talk about that stuff. COVID. Omicron, shit like that. We can we can we can talk about COVID. I don't think that's a, that's too controversial, right? I mean, there's... About, like how it is how it has affected social media. Okay, I'm I'm yeah. open it. So what do you what do you think? What do you mean by that? I mean, you know, with I don't know with with the recent rise of the pandemic um mm. in the last two years i think that it has exponentially just is exponentially changed the way that social media works i think that a lot of social media platforms have had more viewership and more consistent viewership than they ever had before because so many people were at home and yeah and you know a lot of a lot of you know the movie scene has been changed a lot of things have been changed due to this sure um have you noticed any of these changes do you think they're good or bad changes have you noticed anything like that um i i would say so i definitely after covid hit like the viewership on streamers like even small streamers kind of blew up after covid right because people were locked into their homes what the fuck are they going to do all day right I mean, like, older people probably figure out things to do, but then, you know, the younger audiences, they're staying at home, they have nothing to do, they're playing video games, or after a while they get burnt out on video games, hey, let me go watch someone who's live, you know what I mean? Like, you can watch YouTube videos for so long, but let's be real, man, even just binging, like, a TV show, like, you're, you're gonna go through that in, like, fucking a week at most if it's a long TV show that's been out for ages that you've never sat down and watched. Like, COVID kind of opened an opportunity for people to kind of appreciate other things, not only like with family stuff, but with with just in general watching content. 
So I, I think it, it, I think it did. Unfortunately, it did good for businesses and for people who, for content creators and stuff like that. But it, uh, of course, the the other side is a lot of people died from it, right? So it's like at yeah. what cost? Um, yeah, I, I mean, you, you got COVID recently, right? <clears throat> yes, I did. And and I mean, you survived, but you were definitely you were definitely not up and at them. You know what I mean? I was no, I was not feeling well at all. Yeah, I remember you were you were so fucking out of it half the time. We were, like trying to talk with each other. You were you were not feeling it. Um, now, something I've noticed. Oh, what's that? Not not take away from the you know the, the mention of you know, how devastating COVID was, but something I've noticed that come COVID pertains to at home entertainment is that the increasingly rapid rise of movies being released direct to streaming services and what do you mean by like, like with netflix netflix or you know amazon prime um, and all that any you know, paramount plus shit mm -hmm. like that mm -hmm. it seems to me like there has been such a rapid rapid um release of movies that are now being straight to streaming services or straight, you know, to online, you know, availability and shit like that. Um, you don't even have to go to the movie theater. And, you know, fucking like, like what is it, like 15 years ago, 20, back, back in the 80s, I can't remember exactly, sure. but, you know, the price of eggs, price of eggs went up. Mm -hmm. And then never dropped. Price of milk went up, never dropped. So now I'm thinking, what is this going to have on the impact of somebody going to the cinema? Do you think the price of cinema stick? will go down or up? I think that perhaps due to circumstances, price of cinema could at some point be non-existent. I think like, why would people want to go really? spend 10 bucks at the movie theater when they could stay at home uh, and watch a movie on their, on their TV or television? That uh, just I think out? it would be, it'd be for the, I mean, for the, for the, for, for people like me who are very, you know, um, what's the word? Not antisocial, um, introverted. Right. Depressed. No. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta bring that up right now, man. <laughs> but, cut it uh, out. Cut it out. <laughs> no, I don't care. Um, but for for the people who are more introverted, like myself, like we, you know, I, I I am more inclined to go out if there's if there's people that I can go out with. I don't like going out alone personally. That's not a thing I, I find fun. Like going to the movies alone. I know some people who are willing to do that, and that's all fine and any whatever your cup of tea. For me, I, I feel like shit going alone out and, and doing stuff like that but i think paying it kind of like how movie like drive-ins like the the movie drive-ins you can watch in your car oh, yes. uh, i think it's more for nostalgia purposes at this point or it's going to become that okay. way right where like people might go in and pay for like people sit in that seat even though it's probably god knows if you turn on a fucking uv light and god knows what kind of shit you'd see on them but um like being able to eat like the popcorn in the movie theater that an expensive ass popcorn they charge you like oh, 20 yeah. bucks Thir 13 fucking dollars <laughs> for a coke yeah yeah like a, like fucking like almost 100 dollars for a big gulp you know what i mean yes, <laughs> no but uh but that kind of stuff i feel like will, will be more so for nostalgic purposes now especially with with but uh, i i think i saw that coming a mile away right like did they have blockbuster in the states Oh hell yeah! Yeah, you remember that when you could, when you could go rent out movies and stuff? Oh yeah, hell yeah! Because I remember when I, when I moved here, um, the, the the first thing not not to the states, obviously I'm in Canada, but when we first moved to to Ontario, um, there was this this uh, blockbuster not far from us, and we used to go there all the time to to rent out movies and stuff. And then like about two or th I remember it was in 2008, I think, is when Netflix started popping off, right? Yeah. And um, and I remember I, I noticed less and less people showing up in Blockbuster. I was like, oh shit. I was like, man. Netflix, Cause, Redbox, Because ne Netflix so was offering movies at like fucking, what was it, like $6 yeah. a month or some shit like that, yeah, right? Like, you could just get a fucking movie delivered to you, to yeah. your home. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, <laughs> so it, it was that. And I was like, man, but like, I'm, I, I miss going to the Blockbuster and renting out those movies, man. Cause like, I remember just like sifting through all these fucking, like, boxes and stuff like that and these these movie what are they called cases i guess those cases and yeah, just like yeah, looking, looking at the DVD cool case. like yeah the dvd case and just looking at the cool like artwork that they put into it and i think that really also helped me for my drive uh early on when i started graphic design as well because i was like but, man you know, like this stuff is cool my question is if it were to happen that you know it becomes a nostalgic commodity for mm -hmm. movie theaters yeah, not to say it's definite but like if it were to if it were to become that is that enough of a of a demand for it to stay in business? I don't know, think so. No, I, I think. I mean, well, think about it. Drive-ins, right? 
how yeah, common are drive-ins? Uh, novelty. They're a novelty. You want to go to the fucking drive-in every day? No, but if you go no. to like once a month or like once in a few years, it's a really cool experience. I've never been but, to one personally, but I would like to. They're they're really cool. Yeah, they're really cool. You can just chill in your car and you know fucking eat some snacks, watch a movie on a big ass fucking projector. Mm-hmm. The fucking speakers are super loud, but like you look at that and it is. You know that was such a thing back in the '70s, in the in the in the '50s and shit. It was such a thing. It was the, you know, it was like a really, in you know, incredible. Um, this is state very, of the art. Popular, it was a turn of events. A very popular form of watching cinema. Yeah, of course. But nowadays, hardly anybody goes to a, a, a drive-in for their sole um, purpose of like you know, like if they want to watch the newest movie. It's not the it's not the 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 main uh, opportunity. Uh, yeah. I mean, you know me. I'm, I'm a big '50s fan, like in general. Like I yeah. love the, the '50s, '60s aesthetic with pre- like Elvis and all that shit, and just you know, like <laughs> I couldn't tell, no. But uh, yeah, like for 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 you, for you guys out there, you know, the fun fact about me, I, I like '50s and '60s uh, style shit, like yeah. diners yeah. with yeah. fucking with checkered floors and shit like that. You know what I mean? Like all, all that shit was just I, I just thought it was dope as hell. It, it brings back I don't know, just brings back some kind of nostalgic feeling for me, even though I, I obviously wasn't born back then. But um. Do the food. we do the fallout as well I, which is, that too yeah um, fallout's cool uh fallout's one of my favorite games the game series in general and and i think um yeah like nostalgia wise like i think a drive-in would be cool and i think the movies are gonna be the new drive-in in that sense i think movie theaters aren't gonna be as packed as they used to be i think in some senses they might still drag appeal for like newly released films that not even netflix can get out right because netflix has to usually wait uh, a year or something like that. I don't remember. I, th- I think they have a certain limit before they make an agreement where they can release that movie. Because I know there's some movies that, like, like for example, The Many Saints of New York, right? You told me you went to see that in the movies. Um, yeah. I know they had it live on HBO Plus or whatever. But I yeah, know it's, ne- Netflix, is, Netflix isn't going to probably have that for a while, if, if ever, to be fair. Because it's an exp- I, I think it might be an HBO exclusive. I'm not sure. But um, if they do decide to have it, I guarantee it probably won't be for another year or two before I even see it on my Netflix. That, that also brings up another good point. It's all these streaming services are putting out their own... Um, movies. Fucking movies, yeah. I mean, you mm-hmm. look at Martin Scorsese, one of his final fucking works, most likely, is, is, is a Netflix the Irishman. original. Is it, is, it, is it a Netflix original? It is a Netflix original. Jesus. But uh, to be yeah. fair, they... Netflix does produce some good shows, and then other times yeah. they drop the ball. Like, like there's a, yeah. there's a show I'm gonna talk about uh, uh, in one of my next hidden gems that is a Netflix original. Like, like even BoJack Horseman, I think, is a Netflix original. Yeah, it, it is. It's uh, it's a good show. Very good, but you also look at fucking Cowboy Bebop and what they've done. I liked it. I know. I, I mean, I, I was a fan of the anime as well. I like Cowboy Bebop. I like the anime, but I, I understood why they didn't make it exactly the same in the in the real life adaptation. I hate that they canceled it because I think. Obviously, they, they tried to bring something fresh at the same time. Because if they just kind of leave it how it is, you know, it, obviously everyone's going to be like, oh, it's predictable. I, I, I think mm-hmm. that was the thing, right? Is I think they kind of changed it up. Not not for so much to disrespect the, the you know, the fan base. But more so to keep them on their toes and, and provide them something new. Like what The Walking Dead did with the comic books has nothing to do with the show anymore. Like it's completely off script. If you really read the comic books and then look at the show. Oh, they, yes, I, I have read the comics. I know all about It's It's yeah. nothing alike. Um, yeah. I mean, it's it's similar, but it's definitely the narratives change. The narratives yeah. change. A lot of characters have been swapped up, and and, and I, I think that's a good thing, though, right? Because it avoids you spoiling yourself if you're a reader of the comics, the original comics. But um, yeah, I mean that. Overall, nostalgia. I think I think movies will still stick around. Movie theaters will still be a thing for new movies. Um how long will they stay in business that depends on how quick the movie industry is popping out movies that aren't netflix exclusives so i think it'll depend on that or or you know amazon prime movie videos whatever it's called prime video i don't remember what it's called all those all those different streaming platforms for movies that are exclusive and even even got fucking paramount plus Mm -hmm. putting out like some of these very popular shows disney oh the mandalorian and all that yeah mandalorian book book of buffet you got you know paramount plus putting out um fucking yellowstone 1883 mm. uh, American kingstown you got netflix putting out uh very prolific putting out netflix originals and yeah. you even have um you even have amazon prime just put out reacher oh man i heard great about that fucking show. I heard great about show that. you have amazon prime just putting out critical roles own show really uh, Legends of yeah 
Critical wow. Role just got their own show. Um, they I did have, not know they that. Have six before. Yeah, that's pretty cool. You you have, even look at this. Like you have a streaming service that is getting very popular, getting putting out very top quality shows. They have just picked up a show that is based off of and developed by a cast of um, fucking D and D players that have put out a very pro prolific Twitch fucking show. Well, let's give them and credit here, Walnuts. Let's give them credit here. They're more than D and D players. They are voice actors. Well, they are. They are. <laughs> yeah, veteran voice actors. They are veteran yes. voice actors. I would agree. But you look at you look at at what they're doing. Yeah, exactly. Unheard of. Unheard of. Yes, they are. They have the fucking. Uh, granted, they have the the connections in the showbiz industry. But you have yeah. people playing D and D, streaming it, and then it begins a fucking TV show with like very prolific um, uh, studios behind Titmouse. Well, they, um, they give what the fan fan base wants, right? The fan base wants to be able to, to watch these in a, in a cinematic universe if they can, right? Because after a while, like, I, I feel like for some people, um, I don't know if it's just me. I, I, I Like, don't get me wrong. You know, I, I like tabletop shit. So, but after a while, I'm just, like, kind of just looking at a board and stuff. It, it's hard to get the imagination flowing after a while. Sometimes your brain kind of just isn't into it. Yeah. Yeah, you know. So I, I think for them to make it into more of a cinematic adaptation, I think it's a lot easier for people to be like, yo, this shit's dope. Mm -hmm. You know? Uh, yeah. But yeah, no. Overall, I, I agree. I think... Uh, I don't know about you. I think that was a good segment. I, I think, think that, that was... Yeah, that was a very good podcast. First podcast. First podcast. We, covered a lot. we did, we did. Uh, yeah. Special guest next podcast. Special guest. Special Steve guest. You weren't supposed to reveal that. Oh, really? I'll cut that out. I'll cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. Yeah, uh, I mean, we'll. we'll yeah, I, I don't care. I don't think she wants yeah. us to be a surprise. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about it. I mean, uh, special, yeah, special guest, special guest, spe special guest, special guest, special guest. Um, special, guest. special guest next week, folks. Big, big streamer, big streamer next next week. You want to next time? You want to <laughs> you 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 do these? Week I mean, we can do these weekly. We can do weekly podcasts. I don't care. I mean, we could try. Yeah, we could try. All right. Fair enough. Uh, thank you guys so much. Uh, I'm going to... Well, yeah. I do think that our next guest will give a bit of a bit of more insight on the topics that we discussed today. I think it'll be cool to see their perspective. I do have a lot of questions for her. I'm not going to lie. Because yes. cause yes. we've never, like... Throughout our friendship, even though I've known she's been a big streamer, we haven't even talked about it. Like, it's not even an elephant in the room yet, either. It's just kind of like, it just never came up. First question, how much do you make? How much do you make? Yeah, of course. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, we'll see you guys. Uh, I'll see if I can make a podcast next week. I think that'd be good. Well, yeah, it was a, it was a pleasure case. It was a, it was a pleasure, Walnuts. Um, yeah. we, will, we will see you guys hopefully next week.